is the third and this is two. Mm. Uh, what is this called? Dreamland. Mm. Wakes up. Why are you texting me while I'm making a video? <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my March 2017 wrap-up. I didn't really read that much this month, like, at all. At the beginning of the month, I kind of got into, like, a huge reading slump, and I just didn't want to read anything at all, because, uh, some things happened where I was just not in the mood to do anything with my life. And then, this past week, I actually read four books in the span of a week, because your girl is just in a wonderful mood again, so reading happens again. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read, it took me like two weeks to read. Because I just didn't want to read at all, but I was like, I need to read something. But I was just not in the mood to do anything. But the book is So Shelly by Ty Roth. And I was really excited to read this because I don't know why, but when a girl's walking away on a cover, I just automatically am drawn towards the book. So I was like, oh, it's going to be really good because it sounds cool too. Yeah, no. No, it was not very good. I gave it a 2.5 stars on Goodreads. The book is a very loose retelling of three dead poets. It's basically them if they were teenagers in modern era. Shelly, who is the girl, has just died. Her final wish was for Keats and Gordon, her two best friends, to spread her ashes on this deserted beach that they used to visit and play her REM CD out of her boombox. On the way to this beach, Keats and Gordon get to know each other better, and it's basically them reliving their lives with Shelly and what they went through. I found all the characters to be kind of boring and lackluster. I didn't really connect to any of them. I didn't care about any of them at all. Gordon was extremely self-centered, and Shelly's obsession with him was just stupid in my opinion. Like, I didn't understand it at all because he was just annoying to me. Honestly, it was just kind of pathetic how, like, obsessed with him she was. Like, she would pine over him and he would, like, go and sleep with 20 other girls and she'd be like, but he loves me. Like, bitch, no. He clearly does not love you if, like, he's sleeping with 20 other bitches, okay? Like, come on. Use your noggin, girl. Use your noggin. The book actually started off really well and I thought I was gonna really enjoy it. It was very interesting and I loved it. And then it got to a point where the plot just wasn't developing, nothing was happening, and it was just boring. It just fell a bit short for me, so I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars, but, like, I still really like the cover. But what's inside, not so great. The next two books that I read are part of the same companion series, and they are definitely what got me out of my slump. I was not in the mood to read, and then I found these two books at the thrift store, and I was like, yes, time to read. So I read them. The first is Lola and the Boy Next Door, and this is by Stephanie Perkins, and the other one is Isla and the Happily Ever After, also by Stephanie Perkins. I really enjoyed these books. Lola, I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. The book follows Lola, who loves to dress in extravagant costumes and what makes her unique. She has an older punk rock boyfriend named Max. He's very supportive of her lifestyle and how she likes to express herself, and she believes that her life is very put together. That's when the Bell Twins come back into her life and things get twisted a little bit. The book was definitely what I needed to get out of my reading slump. It was very fast-paced and enjoyable and it was really easy to read. The book was very predictable. It's obvious what's going to happen just by the title of the story, but it was so cute and fluffy you can't help but love it. I also really loved how Etienne and Anna were thrown into the book and you got to see them again. Definitely one of my favorite parts of the story. I did find Lola to be kind of annoying and very immature at times, but like she's only 16 I think, so like it makes sense. But girl, make good choices in your life. But overall I did think she was a very good character. I loved Cricket. He's so cute. And such a little baby angel unicorn. So shy and just like, oh. Like you can't help but just want to like squish his little face. I really liked how you saw Lola and Cricket both grow as people as their relationship formed. I highly recommend the whole series. It's so cute. Which leads me to the next book, Isla and the Happily Ever After, also by Stephanie Perkins. It's the third and final companion novel of this series. Which I am so bummed about. Like, I honestly want another one so badly. I also gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Isla Martin, who has had the biggest crush on Josh since her freshman year. So when she finds out that Josh actually likes her as well, she's amazed and 
their relationship forms. Again, the book was very cute, very fluffy, highly predictable. It was obvious what was going to happen, but... I didn't really like Isla that much. Honestly, I kind of found her kind of stalkerish and creepy with some of the things that she was saying and doing in the book. I was just kind of like, girl, like you're you're at the level up here, bring it down a little bit. Your your crazy is showing. I did really like Josh though. I thought he was a total sweetheart. All the boys in Stephanie Perkins' books, like total angel baby unicorns, and I just want to squeeze them forever. The book was definitely a case of insta love. Which, if you've been on my channel for a while, you know I really don't like insta love. But. I still really enjoyed the book. It was super cute and fluffy, so it was what I needed to get me out of my slump. So, good times, good times. Highly recommend. I also really liked how Anna and Etienne and Lola and Cricket were also in this book because I love them. So, you know, if I get to see them again, your girl's happy. And then the final book that I read for this month of March. I was going to say February, but it's March. Was Dreamland by Sarah Dessen. This book was actually way better than I thought it was going to be because lately when I read Sarah Dessen, I don't really like it. I usually give it like either a 2 or a 3 star. But I give this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thought about giving it a 4, but I was like, eh, it wasn't as good as Lola or Isla, so like, <laughs> 3.5. The book follows Caitlin, who wakes up one day to her older sister Cass missing from her house. Turns out Cass ran away with her new boyfriend Adam. Although she does miss her older sister, she has felt that she is always in Cass's perfect little shadow. So she decides that now is her time to make her own path. That's when Caitlin meets Rogerson and he is everything she's always hoped for in a boyfriend until he's not. And that's all I'm gonna say, but like was not expecting what happened in this book and I'm kind of like happy that it went that road. It was actually really good. I love how Sarah Destin chose to tackle the topic. It was very well done. I honestly think this is the first Sarah Destin book that I've thoroughly enjoyed and I wasn't kind of like rolling my eyes at it. At times, I wanted to like take Caitlyn and shake her and be like, Wake up, girl. Like, what are you doing? Although I do know that when you're in this situation that Caitlyn was facing, it's a lot different. Anybody can say like, oh, you need to get away. You need to leave. But when you're in that situation, like, you know, you probably should leave. But just, you don't because you love the person. And... It's not good, but you do it anyways. The book is an extremely fast-paced book to read. It flowed so well. It was really good, to be honest. Like, I couldn't put it down because I needed to know what happened next with Caitlin and Rogerson. I really enjoyed how Sarah Dessen took this topic, and I think that it was a very real portrayal of what you go through during what went down. Which I don't want to say because spoilers, but it was definitely very real. So, 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was a goodie. So there you guys go. That was my March wrap-up for 2017. I only read four books, but three of them were pretty high ratings compared to my other ratings that I've been doing, aka one and two stars. So 3.5 to four stars. Round of applause for Jay actually liking a book for once. I will see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.